Hey everybody, thanks for coming in to the Paracord Bootcamp. I'm so happy to see you all again. Um, thanks to my friends at Michael's for having me. And of course, my buddies out in Pepperell, Massachusetts, Pepperell Braiding Company, um, longtime friends and hardcore supporters in the craft industry. Um, we are gonna kind of like shallow dive, a little bit of deep diving here and there, but we'll come up for air on some paracord techniques. Paracord, if you were, um, are familiar with it, is the super strong material that you probably are most familiar with it um, from military applications. Um, we like to think that its recent popularity is kind of a modern form of trench art from guys in the military down there making all kinds of items utilitarian with it. Um, this is a super strong mat material. Um, there's different sizes of it, which we'll get into in a minute. It's also made in the USA from Pepperell Braiding Company. So I'm super excited to be here. Uh, you know, my most recent uh, really great memory of uh, Paracord is I was down volunteering at our youth center um, for, you know, just kids that just kind of got the short end of the stick. And we were down there making art. And all of a sudden, our local sheriff walked in with an armload of paracord to start teaching these kids how to make bracelets with paracord. So uh, one of the things I love about it is it doesn't seem to matter if you're 10 or 210. Um, it seems to speak to a lot of people that are good with their hands. And so we're going to play around with it. Um, I hope you'll get some new ideas from it, whether it be just a simple square knot bracelet or going into a little bit deep diving where we're going to do a herringbone stitch and maybe make a little beach bracelet. So I'm going to turn around. Um, this is my studio. You are in and it is, um, let's see, um, you are in a house from the 1800s. I put out a big range of paracords so I could show you that what you want to go for at the store is if you want to make a lighter weight bracelet, maybe go with the 325 size. This is lighter. Um, and any of these techniques you can use any size with. This is the heavier, maybe a little bit more popular with the 550. All right, it comes in rainbow, American flag, um, cool pattern, this, I love this pattern, uh, glow in the dark even, and there's a ton of accessories. The other thing you're gonna need to get rolling is some clasps. These come in all different um, sizes. So you wanna kind of match, you know, the scale of your bracelet. Uh, if you're making maybe a women's bracelet, go with the small buckle. You can see the size up at the top. There's also a value pack where you get a little bit of everything at Michael's. Um, here's a more detailed. But I like to show you things in packaging because I don't know about you, but sometimes when I go to the store, if I just saw something like this, that's a needle in the haystack. So I like to show it to you in the packaging. Pepperell does a great job of just getting the size right front. Um, so that's what you're gonna kind of look at. All right, let's get going with that square knot bracelet. Um, and we're gonna be working off of the easy jig. This is what the easy jig looks like in the box. It's a wooden jig. That's basically your third hand. Um, you know, we could all use an extra set of hands. So this is this jig tool that makes uh, doing the braiding a lot easier. Yeah, I don't have it. But, um, before I forget, Pinterest, Michaels has a ton of paracord ideas on Pinterest. So if you're looking to expand this, I mean, there's like a good 20 ideas on their Pinterest board for paracord projects. All right, so this is the jig in person. And it's essential for making bracelets because um, it's got the two sizes of buckles. And of course, you could always use like some duct tape if you don't have one of these handy and you just have your, or a clipboard or something. But this has your accessory hooks or um, if you don't, um, if you're making something else and you just need something to anchor, got a couple of hooks on it. It also has an, a link bolt at the bottom that you can size your bracelet to. So you can see if you want like a seven or an eight or whatever. I'm going with a seven. Kind of like standard seven and a half inch wrist length. So I'm going with seven. And then, um, sorry, line up your lines. I have an older version of this. There we go. There we go. That was a little, that was more than seven and a half. Um, but line up your lines for your seven. And then choose what size buckle that you're going to use. The other cool thing about this tool 
and just to like when you open it, I don't want you to lose these parts and pieces, but it comes with a couple of spare nylon jaws um, or loops that you can remove the screw and then say you have a key ring or another clasp or whatever, you can attach your clasp to that and then buckle it right on down. So it's very versatile. Um, and we'll get into a little bit more of it in a minute, but the first thing we're gonna do is this square knot bracelet. So uh, this is the standard one, uh, but then you can see a souped up version with the compass and they sell these attachment pieces. This is um, called a survival bracelet. I have a friend that was in the military and he used to hide a tiny razor blade in here. It was so uh, thick, you could hide a razor blade in there so that if you needed it, um, it would put in his bracelet. True survival. Um, there's also clasps that might go to that have whistles. You see that little whistle on there. So this is all part of the survivor teams. I've seen kids selling uh, paracord projects at craft shows. I think there's really something great to the repetition of knotting, and it's really good for kids to just get into you know this repeat knotting. Okay, so this is the buckle. It's just a snap fit. You've probably seen these on dog collars or something. And the cool thing about it is we can just put one end of the bracelet into the clasp and then the other end. And it's already sized to fit. So we know now, get that guy in there. We know now that all we have to do is fill the center sections with paracord. Okay. All right. Also, this um, jig comes with some great instructions and the type of bracelet that we're making is down here on the bottom. So easy. Um, and we'll get going with eight feet of the 550 cord. This is going to make a chunkier bracelet. You're going to fold it in half. This is a nylon material, so you can melt it with a big lighter, whatever a lighter. So it's see on one side, I've melted it. On the other, this is the um, nylon that's cased inside. So go ahead and it's a good idea to work around an open window, but you can just see how that's kind of just melting against itself. Um, always get, sometimes I'll work under my vent hood on my stove. Um, and then sometimes I have some tweezers where I'll just kind of take it and smash it and um, seal the end. But that really makes it handy because now it's not going to unravel on you while you're uh, stitching. Okay. All right, there we go. So let's get going with the Lark's Head. Tell me, um, I've got my friend Anna from Pet Girl Breeding hanging out with me today. Tell me, Anna, if, if there's anything that you can't see or, you know, whatnot. But we're going to start with the Lark's Head Knot. I think it looks great because they can see all of it. Can you see all of it? Okay, we can good. see all of it. Yep. So one of the things that I kind of caught my eye is this has a double hole right there. We're going to just kind of ignore that. All right. So we're going to start with the work set going through the top. And you can, there's lots of tools that you can use. You know, you might want a skewer next to you or whatever, but you see how I have a loop now? I'm going to get rid of that black cord. That's going to be that. like a spaghetti bowl up here on my work. And then just pull those two tails, that's four feet on each side, through. So it's, oh, it's nice and neat. I pulled too hard. Hey, Candy, how much paracord are you using to make this bracelet? That's actually a great question. A whopping eight. But if you're going to make something longer, uh, you know, you might need, you know, 10 feet. So one of the things, Anna, that I love about Pepper is, um, you know, you can make this very, you guys have kept this very affordable. Um, okay, so now we're going to come in and we're going to go take our tails down to the opposite side of the bracelet and we're going to put them through that opposite end. And then you can always tidy it up as you go. Okay. 
and everything organized. And you're now ready to start breaking. So our set at one end, and then put your cord to the top at the other end. We're gonna do a simple square knot, and there'll be a make that I'll like to bump back to break with those. Oh, I like to just make make like we'll call it a backwards four or backwards L or whatever, but we're gonna take the right side of the cord over the top, and then the left goes over and up through. This is your basic square knot stitch. And it's just a great way to get familiar with hair cords. Now we're going to go the opposite way. And we're going to go left. And if you guys already know all this step, I'll give you about you know five minutes to finish this up. And then we'll zip on to that beach bracelet. Okay. Now right side goes over. And you're going to put the bottom under and through the loop. And then the left, okay, goes over the top, underneath everything, and up through the loop. Right, over everything. Left goes over the top and underneath. And, you know, I, um, it's interesting how, you know, craft supplies have evolved, I think, from, you know, utilitarian items. This, um, you know, this is a paracord is short for parachute cord. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. It's, it's actually a product from the Second World War. Um, it's a shroud line, basically. And originally, shroud lines uh, were made from silk because silk was strong. And then later on, the DuPont family developed nylon for stockings. And the military people got a hold of it and started to make it into straps um, because it was very, it was very strong. So that's kind of like that's a really reader's digest version of paracord. But you can see how fast I've already got two inches done, and you would just keep doing this all the way down. Now, to just before I should have probably showed you this beforehand, but just to show you, when you measure a bracelet, I'm going to take into account the whole clasp on one side, but not on this side, because essentially that's my full clasp right here. So we've got all the way right on the money to seven, um, seven inches, seven and a half inches right there. So because we've got the full clasp and then where it stops on the blue, seven inches. Okay, so just don't take into account end to end. Sometimes that gets confusing. You don't really need to class like a bracelet. All right, when you're finished, I got one ready for you here. And you're all the way to the end. There's a cool little tool. We probably actually don't even need this that in, but you've got your ends like this. Um, you can take your ends and try to squeeze in one last stitch, or they have a little tool, type of link to the cute little tool that um, has a nice little tapered end. You can thread that in. And pull through. I've got a little aggressive point that you can pull through your end. So, and that gives you a really look how clean of a finish that gives you. And what also happens is once we um, bring up our ends, we're going to melt this the ends to itself and finish the bracelet. And that's how easy. So you can see, like, now you know why all these kids at the craft shows, and it's a great like um, tool for almost meditation with how many knots you're making. Um, sometimes I get kind of nervous, like is that really gonna hold or whatever, but you can make a, I like to make just a little bit of a knot on the back. Some people say you don't have to, but I think that crafts and creativity are kind of like the other meatloaf where it's like everybody has their own recipe, how I do mine. If you're gonna seal this, um, trim your ends with scissors, 
like so. And then just go ahead and seal your ends. Don't melt your plastic. <laughs> go ahead and melt that down. And um, good to have your tweezers nearby. See how I'm kind of peeling it back away. Not nervous at all having this leg right under my phone. Um, but that's melted down pretty good. And then we can use our, our tweezers to just close that down. And then you would repeat for the other side and that's a beautiful little stone. Super quick. Now you'll be looking at how everybody finishes their work with this leg, huh? All right, here we go. Now let's talk about a little bit more um, advanced technique. I'm going to take a sip of water while I show you this bracelet and tidy up a little bit. This is a herringbone stitch. Um, it uses the thinner cord. We use the 550, but on this one, we are using the 325 to make kind of a, a more delicate bracelet. Um, this is on a, a skinnier clasp as well. I used some little um, cowrie shells that I found at Michael's and stitched them on with sweet beads. But I like this bracelet because I can wear it in the summer and I don't feel like I'm gonna, you know, a lot of times with my metal bracelets, um, the oxidation, the pools, the beaches, the whatever, salt um, is tricky. Uh, so uh, this is one, this is the 325 weight. And see the difference in the scale of the knots or the size of cord. But this is a fun little bracelet, and you can have, look at the size 325 on top, 550 on the bottom. Um, but this is a great way to make a different style bracelet and um, have kind of a more delicate stitch. So, what we'll do next, yeah, a little bit. I do like some heavier boot scissors when I'm cutting all of this. You know? I try to make it look cute for you guys, and then next thing you know, it's like this. this. Anna, are you that way at your desk? Is it just like, I don't know what happened. My desk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now I'm going to lower my camera a little bit. It's a cloudy day here at the studio and you can see the light. Um, I'm going to pull in the, the light. I've gone ahead and cut, pre-cut for uh, another eight feet of 325. Okay, and we're going to start it with it folded in half. I've also gone ahead and fitted my jig, easy jig, you can get it my close too, with that one is in there, um, with a more delicate clasp. Okay. And certainly if they want to get even more jewelry, we have 95, which is even thinner than the 325. So if they're a little bit intimidated by the bigger cords, it can go a lot smaller. Yeah, the 95. And did Tom send me any 95 enough? I, I have no idea if he did or not. He, we I figured the 325 is a great balance in between the two, but you know, it is smaller than that 325 even. I like the 325 myself. I think it's great. Me too. It's something I haven't had as much experience with, but I love it. Okay, so now we're going to start again with the large knot, and this is something really that I, this is a new technique for me, so um, if it doesn't come with you to you right at first, I'm thinking about filming a video of it. It's a really beautiful braid, um, but to get started, it takes a little bit. So the first thing you're going to do is fold your paracord exactly in half, and then go straight in to the clasp and with the loop, and pull your tails through the loop. And then just leave it like that. Just leave it exactly like that because we're going to then we're going to take our loops or our tails down and bring them right up through that hole. They're going to go the first time we went to the top, this time we're coming up from the bottom. 
See how I'm going up from the bottom, up from the bottom. And I think this easy jig is just like a great um, little, uh, a great, uh, what's the word, like a lazy girl, lazy boy tool. And then we're going to put them through, you guys, we're going to put them through that same folded section. Right there. See how I pulled out the lark's head part? And we're going to put the cords, the tail ends right through. But I just want to set up my tray and just start knotting on the rest of the tray. And then you're going to organize your cords so that everything is sitting pretty. Just like that. See how those just kind of rolled right through itself? And at the end, if you guys have techniques you want to see again, holler at me and I'll help. Okay. Now, do this little piece right here. And you can move any of these pieces off to the side if you don't need them. But now we're going to take the left side of the cord and get it all out of our way. And then we're going to take the right side of the tail down through the cloud. Kind of scoot it so your cord is in the middle. And then we're going to make a backwards L, like we did from before. Okay, and what I kind of like to do is put my thumb right over that intersection. See how I'm holding that backwards L is key. And then we're going to go up from the bottom. Yeah. Hopefully, I got that right on the first one. I'm worried I did. And point your tail sitting out on the side. Is that right? Yeah, there it is. So it looks like a baby lark's head. Um, sitting right by itself all the way. And the other thing that's kind of important is you see that slack right there? Um, you want to kind of get rid of that. So go ahead and loosen up your knots and pull things on. Okay, just like so. And then now we're going to do the left side. If you remember, uh, let me go down through the clasp. This time you're going to make the opposite sides of the, um, you know, last time we made a backwards L, this time make a regular uh, shape L. And go up. The middle of the class and down through this side of your L shape. And now we're ready for the hearing to go on the beat. Pull everything snug so that you have your, your uh, four strands coming off and your two big large head at the top. And um, if you're like, man, I really want to do this, but I've lost my spot, guess what? This is one of the pins on uh, Michael's paracord board. Um, I put in everything. It's down towards the bottom. There, it's called the Zipper Bracelet Tutorial. And it's really has beautiful step-by-step -step instructions so that you can see what you're doing. And even talks about how to make it two different colors. So if you get stuck, there's reference points out there. Look up the zipper bracelet tutorial, and you can find it on the Michael's Pinterest boards. All right, here we go. Now, um, this is the part where we're going to start the weave. If you look at my finished bracelet, you can see it has this beautiful, almost, you know, almost a, a French braid of sorts. It's so smooth, and it's 
interlocking is what I really love about it. So to do that, we're going to basically be weaving the cords through the center and you're just going to take them. Um, I like to start with the right, take it over the uh, right cord down through the bottom and then pass the left side over everything except underneath the right and that gets you your start and now um, you're literally going to you pick what side you start on i tend to start on the right so i'm going to take the right over the right and under the left now my left goes over the left under the right. And at first you'll be like, this looks like a horror movie. Um, but it's it's like it's a pattern starting to emerge. And you really have this beautiful braided piece. The left goes over everything, but under the right. And that's what starts to cinch your core, let's call them your core line together. Right goes over the right, but under the left. Left goes over the left and to the right. And um, I'm not going to make you a juror watching that. If I have one ready. Now, um, and I recommend when you get into doing something like this uh, to break the whole thing at once because. What always happens to me is um, I start braiding and then I stop uh, to do something or eat a bunch of ice cream or whatever. And then the second half of my braid like doesn't, <laughs> doesn't look as nice, you know? So <laughs> watch yourself. Watch out. This one looks like I started. You can tell when you have messed up your pattern because it doesn't look um, how it was supposed to be. No one made it with the hair cord because it's not going to be kind of long. And I'm just I'm literally just using a fabric cord to put it on. Anna, don't you think we should film a quick video when I come to Pepperell, Massachusetts? Because you know I'm coming out from Massachusetts. I definitely think you should. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's the idea. And then, um, and then we're going to peel up the ends like we did before. Um, with your finished piece. And then you'll have, let's just look at this, this one. You can take your pieces and parts and melt them together once you tie them off. It lights on fire. Don't, let, don't take it that far. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Around here, Anna. It happens. It happens. Always good to make sure that you have something metal in your hand that you can yes. sort of press it like scissors. You're using tweezers. Great idea. I burned myself so many times with parachute cord. I'm telling you. Um, but um, that's how you're going to peel up your end. And it's going to be really strong. And secure. Okay. And then we're going to take our finished piece. And we're going to peel it up. And then we're going to take our finished for how to stitch to this. And if anybody has questions or uh, wants to see something again, we can totally circle back to that. But when it comes to stitching on something, I don't like to use just a regular um, sewing thread for this kind of project. I use a beading thread that is a very strong, it's almost like dental floss strong. It has that feel to it. And you can add a little beeswax to yours if you want to. But that is what I use to stitch. And I'll just show you a quick tutorial here. You can double your thread. You know what I was thinking is how fun would it be to string some beads on that 325 before you started the bead? I think the only question that people would have would be maybe if you could show 
um, working that wasn't on the jig maybe and with a slightly brighter color because some people I think are having trouble seeing the black. The black? Yeah. I'm worried about that. Yeah. <laughs> I was I got too uh, obsessed with the trendiness of that black with the patina pieces. And I think it looks great, but that way you know just for the color effect, so they can see. Totally. Okay, so um, this is your thread. Definitely double it up though, and then you can anchor this. Let's just do it on this one. You can anchor your thread on the back. Hold my piece on that. Um, I'm sorry, and I missed when you started this. Did you lock your stitch like you would as if you were sewing through fabric? You better believe it. I went to okay. that was back when they had home ec classes. <laughs> I'm an old school trained. I know how to sew a button on. Yeah, two forward stitches and one back stitch. Um, and then just make sure that everything is kind of bending as you sew. Okay, just like that. And then you can mirror your, your colors or whatever. Oh, wait, sorry. Make one stitch by itself, dropping the needle right on the other side of the finding. Don't get it all hooked up on your buckle, though. That's good. Then I just did that all night. I went up one step early. Now I'm so focused on the piece. Okay, here we go. All right. And then now, It's a fascinating history that Paracord has, though. It's, you know, started out military and now it's crappy, you know, being military. It's amazing. And you guys have done several, I feel like it's done such a good job making the colors interesting and a great quality. All right, here we go. Turquoise. And a copper. And a coral color. Um, this summer I was teaching at art camp and they're showing how to uh, bleed with uh, 
yarn and the kids just even the boys just that finger was just that so addicted um and just you can tell me this was obsessed with it like i could see you know why kids just really get into hair it's so simple and the results are so dynamic there we go so I, now i have my little seed beaded link on here and that's how i did it and then i tied off with two two more forward stitches one back i do not use a lighter with this stuff <laughs> i think you could though but i don't i don't feel like it But, um, you know, I'm a big advocate for kids using their hands and anything that gives them a break from their technology that they're getting in school, to helping them find their passions, keep their hair and I feel like this has been a great craft and um, something kids can make some money with. Any craft they have worked with yourself. And that's it. And then go ahead and trim your ends. But um, I just want to give you a heads up on I don't use the regular sewing thread for this. Maybe like a denim thread would be good. But um, my husband's getting mad because I think he was buying this bracelet and now I sew a big old leaf on it <laughs> with some beads. <laughs> but you can see how that just kind of, you know, made it a little bit more feminine, I think, in design. Um, and how with the thinner cord, you really can. You know, really change it up. All right, so um, Anna, can I show? I think I'm going to grab one of these bigger clasps. Yeah. And then I'll show how to. Um, you want me to show how to attach the herringbone or do the weave with the larger? Um, I think the herringbone was the one that people were having trouble seeing. Okay. Um, and, and at least. Um, yeah, and, and they had questions about how you had finished it because it was sort of hard to see with the black. So I don't want to have you making an entire bracelet, but um, I don't know if there's a way to um, show that a little bit better. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to see. I'm very um, up for giving it a go. Let's see what we can do. Okay. Okay. This is the 3.5. This is the 95, so that's what we were talking about. Um, let's try the 325. I actually think I was using the 95 for my bracelet. Sorry, folks. Let's try this. You know, people make a lot of dog collars with hair. Well, and, and certainly with all of the paracord sizes, the knots are going to be the same. It's just going to be the buckle is going to be smaller and the cord is going to be smaller. Yeah, and the finished product. Here's another application that I really love doing, which is tape beading around paracord to make these blue chains. This is a fun technique that I've shown a bunch on my Facebook page. But um, it's a great core for that because it's so flexible, but it's strong enough to hold all my beads. Did you know I made those, Anna? They're like one of my favorites. I didn't. I love that. <laughs> Maybe Michael's will get us to do a video on CP ropes. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to burn these ends in a little bit just so they're not unraveling as I'm working with the cord. And we'll get this hearing bone. I didn't cut as long a cord this time just to show quickly. You know how we get this going. Let me clean up so there's no distractions. And I'm going to try to really get close with my camera. One of the things about Zoom um, is that you can't, all of a sudden, your camera doesn't function how you want it to. Like a lot of times when we're just using the camera application, we can Zoom. And so I could show you up close and personal. So I'm going to fumble with my camera a second. Um, so that I can get up close for this one. Okay. There we go. So lock it in. Started 
And I'm also going to try to get a little bit more light. Get myself out of it. Okay. How's that? There we go. I've got this place so uh, lit up, I can barely get to my table, but I feel like you can see. Okay. So we've got our loop. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is go down through the middle. And to make a large head knot. Anna, does this look a little bit more brighter? Yeah, it's a lot easier to see. With the red? All right. Yeah. Thank you for being patient with us. Now we're going to bring our cord back up from the bottom underneath. We're going to go this way, underneath. So both cords are going up, going through the clasp. Sometimes one of us, one at a time, is easier. And get two of us, two at a time, to get on you. Okay. And then, hopefully, it splits my cords. And then bring your tails back through the center. Split these guys apart, that large head right there. And it's going to go through your loop again. And you're going to be like, what? Trust me, it'll work. Okay. So I'm just pulling out that little loop where we put it through first. And then I'm going to repeat for the other side. And we're going to take the right tail through. Right there. It's now so that everything is sitting nice and even. And sometimes, like the thing I've learned through doing these projects and whatever, sometimes you have to almost lock yourself in a room and tell your friends and family, Don't call me, I'll be out when I get there. <laughs> we have a joke around here is like, Don't talk to me, don't think about me, don't look at me. I gotta get this figured out. But you can see how this stuff is nicely coiling around. And if I undid it a little bit, I could play around with it and get it so all my cords are sitting perfectly spiraled onto this clasp. See, I'm just kind of tweaking, and now everything is sitting side by side. And that's what you want. Okay, now we're going to go to the other end. And you guys, this is one of those things where I feel like sometimes things are so simple, they're tricky. <laughs> So the first thing we're going to do is split the cords in half. So the right is going on the right, the left is going on the left. And we're going to thread from the top into the bottom with the right cord first. And we're going to pull it so it's not. Okay. Now we're going to make um our little um four okay and you're gonna hold your triangle so it's sitting like that now i'm anchoring it with my thumb and then now and oh and i'm not talking enough um now i've got my four shape and it's this time this four first time we went top to the bottom. Now we're going to come up through, come up through. This is all key things that you, you'll be like, what am I doing wrong? Um, it's, it's really important that, that um, kind of leveling everything up. And now we have one half of our piece that's sitting in a large set. Okay. So now um, we'll do the left side. The left cord is over here. Up. 
pull it up. Now we're going to hold our four shape or a backward four or whatever is natural shape. And I always like to put my thumb right over where the um, threads are, where the cords are intersecting, in the intersecting, so hold my loop shape. And now we're going to bring it down up to the bottom. Now that's making a little pocket. We can put it in the loop right there for our piece. Pull it through. Pull it over so that all four pieces. Oh, shoot. We yeah, messed that one up. But we need to scoot over this one a little bit so that it's. I'm not even that one. Sorry, folks. Um, so that all the pieces are sitting side by side. You'll know that's one thing that I like about this Cordo too is that it's easy to get your knots undone and it's easy to, you know, tell when you're just like, oh, I went the wrong way. And I already see what I did. Um, <laughs> this time. So when you start, you need to go this down through it and then when we come back up, we're going to go up through it. And that's the, that's the kind of thing that I was learning um, as I was going through you know. So now we're going to make our, our uh, loop and it's going to come back up. This is not for the thing at heart, but for a loop now. <laughs> but once you get it, you get it. Okay, and now we're coming back through. And see how that just marks heads up? So now you just want to make sure that everything is nice and small. That right there was the most challenging part for me to get because I was not remembering that when you first start, you have to go down through the class. When you make your triangle shape and come back, then you have to go up through the class. And then that's the bleeding part of care for that can sometimes get you. So now we're set on um, braiding. And it's really as simple as you're going to take your two pieces and kind of Stick them through the middle and they're going to crisscross over each other. Stick them through, bring them through the center of your cord to start the weave. And now your home free is just kind of you're bringing one side, uh, one side over itself, so to speak. So left over the left side, down through the middle. And then right, right, run that up and then left, goes over everything, down through the middle, and then back. Um, it feels kind of weird at first because you think there's no pattern coming in, but you know, just don't go through there. And now they can see when you say, it, you know, it's going to feel messy when you first start and it will tighten up as you go along because that's how parachute cord always feels. It always feels messy until you start actually yeah, pulling it tight. Yeah, and I'm holding it right over top where I'm working. Now we're going to Fishtail or herring bone. Just constantly looping around the outside through the middle. Once it goes over the left or the right, it's going to come back and over the left but under the right. And then this guy comes over the right and under the left. But then it has to quickly circle back and go over the left. And then when you get to the end, you'll tie off like we did in our initial bracelet. And um, melt your ends together like we did with this one. That's it, literally a simple tie. Boy, that black is hard to see, isn't it? Just blends right in. But a simple knot and then um, melt 
hands together, and that's it. I want to show you some other ideas um, from the pepperal braiding hair form board. Um, these pieces using nuts and bolts, more just simple knots attaching to the clasp. Um, someone's asking how to add a, a compass to it. These are cool. Um, these uh, Michael sells these, or Pepperell sells them. They're little slides. They're like beads. So you would string them um, onto your, um, let's see, where's my blue one? They just slide on the parachute cord, just like a bead. They slide on this section, and then you knot around them. So you would get the knot. So when you're setting up your bracelet, you would put your uh, compass bead on the core thread and then knot around it or stitch around it. That's how that one's done. Let's see how that fits the bead. And the bead on the back side. Now, the side cords just go around it and just continue knotting. You do have to carry your pattern through though, or else you'll have a slight twist in it. So just remember where you left off and dodge the bead. But um, the spacing of the compass holds the um, stitch really nicely. This one just needs the whistle clasp, you know? Right? The whistle clasp that you guys make? Yes. Uh, isn't that great? Great guy gifts. You know what, Chris is coming out. These are great guy gifts. I also want to show you these. This is made by a veteran, Vietnam vet, uh, with the three stripes. This is um, special, uh, his design. Um, you can use paracord for the monkey balls. Um, they make little cool monkey ball accessory pieces that you can get. So if you're like, I have all this paracord laying around, there's the monkey ball kit that you can actually learn how to make those. I call them monkey balls. They're really monkey fist. Um, and then I like also if you don't want to mess with, I know we have a lot of jewelry makers, a lot of my friends are watching. If you don't want to make um, the ends, you can use a um, like an E6000 or a super glue gel adhesive to just glue your ends into these jewelry frames. And Michael sells a ton of, they're called end caps. Um, you'll get them in the jewelry section. Uh, but those are great for people that just want to finish the ends. They don't want to knot. They might not want to use that buckle clasp, a little bit more fancy of a look, but that's a great solution too for finishing the ends of a cord. I would still burn the ends though, guys. Like if you're going to use those cord ends. Here's another one with a, um, a spring clasp, lobster claw, um, using the Kuma Hemo braid. Um, on these, I don't know, this is like a sporty one, but you know, eyeglass holders. You know, a lot of people were using these for mask holders. Um, you can braid around mac like macrame around rings to make other styles of bracelets. And another idea I want to show you is using the end findings, um, where you can put the ends in and then just smash these fold over end findings to hold your cord in. So this is like a great you know kids project where all they have to do is use some pliers, just smash those down, and they have a little thing. You know, really fun. fun um, any other questions, Anna? I don't think so. There was a question about how to make one that's two color. That would be, um, you know, fusing the ends together. I don't yeah. know if you want to show. Um, it's pretty easy to do, but maybe if they see you do it. Fusing the ends? When you fuse yeah. your ends, um, I'm usually a, a one color tour. When you fuse your ends, do you just lay them over and light them up and then meld them together? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or I get one so that it's burning hot and then just try and press the other one into it. And it, it's not always the neatest looking thing, so. But you're gonna, I'm getting some scraps here, um, but you're gonna knot over it anyway. So, yeah, and it's it's good to practice. I'll say that to people. Like Candy's <laughs> using a scrap. I would use a scrap and practice. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying where it's like, it's kind of funny. This stuff is so simple. Um, it's uh, sometimes I'm just like, is it really that easy? <laughs> and it is. Okay, here we go. I know a lot of people. 
for getting ready for fall and craft shows and making gifts. And I like that these are good dye, dye jewelry ideas. So I'm going to use my two tweezers to do this, Anna. I actually like using sections that are a little bit more fluffy because um, it gives us a little bit more something to bond to. Yes. Yes. So me too. I wish I had a silicone mat underneath us. Here we go. And um, a bunch of lights and cameras. You know. <laughs> Here we go. Burn the place down. But um, it's usually when you put something together, a little bit of overlap isn't going to hurt anybody. You know, but we're just going to try to get them real close together. Put those ends down there. But I kind of like the fluffy sections because then you can start and kind of tack it together. And you can always trim a little bit as you go, but get it tacked together first, you guys, and then finish it off. It's going to definitely, you know, it's going to take you a minute to kind of get it started. And this is where tweezers really come in handy because you can kind of speed it up. Don't need it so long that your tweezers get too far though, you know. But you can come at it from a couple ends. But I read up on people and I've watched videos too. Do you go end to end, Anna? Uh, it depends. I, I'm watching you going like, yeah, that's a lot uh, probably safer than me because yeah. I'll end up, <laughs> you know, taking the, the side that's a little bit fluffier and sticking the other piece into it. And that's, that's probably why I get burned yeah. so much. But and I like to just overlap and go, you know, like, I don't Nice and it. slow. <laughs> slow, easy does it, you know, but always a good idea, guys, to work in a well-ventilated area when you're doing things like this, you know? I mean, I can't stress it enough. You, you have to take care of your body when you're here so you can grab whatever, you know? Also, it's worth mentioning that the hottest part of your flame um, on a lighter is the, on any flame, sorry, is the blue section. So really want, be mindful, you know, I think a lot of us think like, oh, the, you know, the yellow part is the hottest. It's actually the blue section is the hottest part. And um, you can see how that's, bonded now really well and but you're also going to have to plan strategically so that I'm going to lay this on the scissors because it's hot um so that you can cover that up with knotting you know what I mean but you want to make sure it's good and bonded because if you have something like that fused in the middle or and try to avoid where like it's going to be on a stress point try to hide your fuses like just inside the start line so that it's covered up you know, if that makes sense. Does that make sense, Anna? That makes perfect sense, yes. Yeah, you don't want to put it on a vulnerable point and um, um, you want to make sure that you, you know, have your hands and area protected and some vents on. And also um, one other point that I want to make on that is your heat is going to, or your tweezers are going to draw your heat, uh, your heat source away. So you're not going to get as like, I don't want to say like all the heat going right on your paracord, you know. I could talk about this stuff all, all day. Are there any other question? I'm reading Kathleen's comment. I use it for bead embroidery. Um, if your ends are fraying, definitely hit it with a um, lighter. Also, it, it so keep that lighter close because sometimes as you're working, your ends will fray a little bit and you can hit it with the lighter, you know. No, I think we got most of the questions. A lot of them were, you know, how to do the two color, how to add a compass, and you caught that one too, so. I can't thank you guys enough. I hope you'll join us on the Pepperell Braiding page for more ideas, and I'm Candy Cooper. Always join me. If you guys have questions down the road, hit us up because we'll help you, you know. Make sure you follow her. She's fabulous. She does these wonderful posts all the time. Thank you. Yeah. You're so grateful. Thank you and to Michaels for all of this. It's been great. Yeah, thank you to our friends at Michaels and to all of you always for just being great supporter. If you like this project, you might check out our stretch magic video we did with Michaels a couple, I don't know, that was time flies, a couple months ago. Um, yeah. Pepperell makes amazing um, stretch elastic for all the jewelry makers out there called Stretch Magic. 
Um, and we did a fun video on that. But look at that, Anna and everybody. See, that looks great. I really like, I don't know if you can tell, but I kind of like Bohemian. I wore my shark's tooth necklace for you guys today. I thought it went with my little shell bracelet I made, but now this is mine. I can, I can wear it now and not have to keep it nice for the video. <laughs> uh, any other questions out there? I don't have any more. I don't see any more. All right, Hanina. Thank you. Um, Michaels, thank you. Again, thank you to everybody. And of course, everybody at Pep World, I love you guys tons and just wish you all a really safe and, um, you know, happy uh, summer and happy creating. Yay, thank you, Candy. Thank you, thank Michael. Thank you so much, Candy. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.